uh, obviously we're happy we won the game. I, I really challenged them. You know, all we've talked about is improving, getting better, uh, giving ourselves a chance to win. I, I, again, great energy, great effort, great defense. Start the game, you're up 17 nothing. I guess our next step, you know, we led double digits first half against Colorado, led double digits today, but we don't continue that. And, and I, I hope it comes through experience. I hope it comes through um, execution. Uh, that's probably our next step, just executing and being a little more perfect. Uh, you know, but we, we kept telling Coach Henderson had the scout. We said they are not going to quit. And, and those dudes, McKissick, you know, big time game, played their butts off, battled us, fought us, held us, everything, you know, and, and they made it tough on us. And they, I thought second half, they really came out, set the tone. Uh, but, you know, to our guys' credit, we just, we made enough plays, uh, got the right stop. Obviously, the free throw is important when, when our two bigs go eight for 11 from the free throw line. That's, that's pretty good for us. And we get there 27 times and shoot 75%. Uh, you got to be happy as a coach. I, I thought um, Antonio and Dejuan gave us great effort. Obviously, Dejuan's overall line is, is really good, 14-9. Three steals, uh, I'm sorry, two steals. Antonio, uh, you know, three blocks, made some really nice plays, plus 12 on the plus minus, and he led us on the play hard charge. So, uh, you know, and then Nigel just is solid. A couple, we got it. One, we got to finish. We had some layups in the first half that uh, we didn't finish. Uh, two, uh, we got to value, we get a steal. We got to value that ball if we don't have an advantage break we got to value that ball and and make the right plays and those just a couple layups a couple uh better decisions on the breaks when we had advantages now you get the lead maybe near 20 or in the 20s now you can break their spirit but we we you know again billy did a good job came out of some timeouts with some nice quick hitters uh their guys played their butts off and and it was probably good for us to have to uh make free throws execute down the stretch and get the ball in against the press, all those things that uh, we haven't even really been able to practice, to be honest. First question to Tim Fitzgerald. Hey, Coach. Uh, how good was your defense there at the uh, start of the game? Well, both uh, the last two games, the start's been unbelievable, to be honest. Uh, you know, our energy, our effort. Um, you know, I, I think, did we go through two TV timeouts and they hadn't scored? Um, if I'm correct, it was pretty close to that. So, um, you know, it, it was, uh, you know, it's impressive. And our, our coaches do a great job of preparing them. The kids are starting to understand. We've talked about enthusiasm. We've talked about energy. And we've talked about preparation. Those are got to be habits consistent that happen every game. And and if they're there, that gives you a chance. Uh, you know, they – they 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 go at you, and uh, you know they broke us down. They made more threes tonight than they have um, in those other games. But uh, you know when you play a team, in-state team, they are not going to quit, and they didn't. And um, I I hope we can continue getting better on defense for longer sustained time in the game, and and including the second half. And how good was Nigel Pack tonight? He's just so solid, you know, he, a little couple uncharacteristic things at the end. He's got to learn and people fought him, but, uh, you know, he, he's good there. And you know, what he, he probably at least 50% from three on the year so far. So, you know, when he misses, we all like what's wrong, you know, it's, it's, <laughs> he's not supposed to do that, but, uh, you know, he's been, he's been good. I liked our minutes. I thought the other night probably had a couple guys go too many minutes. Uh, I thought that, Hope to hopefully help to sustain the energy into the second half, and uh, and be able to guard and get stops and make plays. I thought Selton made some improvement. I mean, you got he's up to 18 minutes, and he was in there in that first half run, did some good things. Uh, Rudy's starting to feel more comfortable. Montavious and Antonio kind of complement each other a little bit, uh, give us something. And Surrey got his 20 seconds and his two fouls, and he's got a lot to learn uh, about college basketball. But it's I've told our guys, college basketball is hard. And, and then you got college basketball and the COVID even makes it hard, harder. And then the winning college basketball is even real, even more difficult. And so appreciate and win. 
we had to get start a win streak. You got to win one to get to two. And now we got a chance Saturday night to get the two. Thanks, Coach. Uh, next question to Kellis Robinette. Bruce, with everything you just kind of mentioned there, does uh, has this season made you cherish every win you get, no matter how they come? Yes, I, I there's no doubt. You know, one, to play the games is really the important thing. And then every win you can get. And and and, and then add into that, get better. Uh, you know, I told the guys the other day, there's an old saying, if you don't get what you want, you get what you need. And that's experience. And those first last week, we didn't get what we wanted, but we did get experience. And and that's what, you know, I, I got to stay focused on that. I got to stay patient with that. You know, I keep saying, I got to be positive and the team's got to stay negative. Uh, negative, of course, on the COVID test. So <laughs> we can continue to do that. We stay in the gym. We keep helping them get better. And uh, good things will happen. And uh, it, if I may, you were one of the first coaches that offered Nigel Pag, maybe even the first, I don't really remember, but what, what was it you saw about him as a high school player that made you think we got to have this guy? Well, he, you know, and so you might ask me a while ago who he's like or somebody did. And, you know, he's like Cam, you know, I thought a little bit recent guy, but maybe even a little step ahead of him just, uh, you know, as a freshman. But, you know, Cam, if you look back at stat wise, he was, he was pretty good, but, Nigel just has that, and I've said it before. I, I was in at Purdue for you know 18 years, and and I was at Illinois for a long time. And Indiana High School basketball, the fundamentals and the feel of the game uh, is special. And Nigel's that you know typical kid that grew up in Indiana, can shoot the basketball, great fundamentals, knows the game. He really he's really intelligent. Got a great family. There's they're intelligent, smart people. They, 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 they know the game. They want the game to be played the right way. And, and that's what we were impressed by. Obviously, we're hell happy after he committed to us and got triple doubles and doubles, double doubles in EYBL. And a bunch of people came, tried to get in there, but Nigel stayed loyal to us. And I hope he's happy. I'm, I'm sure, Ed, I know we are happy. All right, thanks, Bruce. Uh, congrats on the way tonight. Thanks. Uh, next question to Jackson Snyder. Hey, Coach, just uh, a lot of turnovers on both sides tonight. I just wanted your thoughts on maybe what was causing those both for your team and then to force UMKC into so many as well. Uh, obviously, I hope it's our defense and, and, and our guys doing a good job of it. Um, I thought it was one thing when we watched tape that we would be able to turn them over. And and I, I told them a lot of times, just be in the right place. Um, and and they'll they'll throw it to you, or, you know, and, and we did a good job of that. Our guys were locked into the scouting report, uh, you know, a quick turnaround, and you know they even had a quicker turnaround, obviously, but a quick turnaround, and and you know they were locked in. For us, we I think we just forced the forced the play. Casey, a couple handoffs, couple of legal screens. He's got to do a better job on that. Um, you know, a couple of breaks. I talked the transition breaks. Nigel forced the action a couple times. Selton's just got to learn to let it come. And you can't make a play every time you touch the ball. And if we're going to make progress, that is definitely something uh, that we have to give ourselves a chance. We're not going to win uh, Big 12 games with 18, 20 turnovers. Uh, we got to get that thing down to, you know, maybe 10 or so. Again, first half assist turnovers. Uh, 10 and 12, again, 10 out of 12 field goals against Colorado. Today we had, I think, either eight or nine assists on 12 field goals again. And then second half, not quite the ball movement to extra passes. And, again, we got we to gotta continue to get better at that. And then just a little on – I know you, you've already talked about the energy and you felt how that was better today. But I, I wanted your thoughts on maybe a little more in-depth what helped get – uh, Kansas City back into the game in that second half? Well, they came out and fought us. And I, I don't know if our guys were, you know, I, I don't, again, we were really mentally ready, jumped on them. And those first three possessions, they fought every pass. They grabbed us, fought us. I mean, to their credit. I mean, and our guys didn't react very well. And then, you know, they got it, you know, we but we were able to make enough plays, make enough free, free throws to keep it in double digits basically the whole game until the end. Uh, but, uh, you know, it, 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 you know, again, give credit to them. They made some threes that they, they, that's not been their game. And they made some threes. So I guess they adjusted and took what we gave them and they made shots. 
we we made some mistakes on the um, the end of the shot clock. You know, Davion, it's like two, three seconds left. Just switch it, make the make kid uh, tough shot uh, over you. Uh, Days one went for a gamble down the stretch. They got a three off of that. You know, we just uh, you know, and, and again we're we're learning and growing, and you know, you're playing a lot of new guys. So it's uh, in in essence, Casey's really a freshman. Because he's going to be a sophomore next year. Antonio's a freshman. He's going to be a sophomore. Mike's the only one. Dejuan's a freshman. Nigel's a freshman. Davion's a freshman. Selton's a freshman. Rudy, obviously, will be a junior. Monty will be a freshman again. So uh, we got a, a really, really young team. And we got to learn and grow. Thanks, Coach. Uh, next question of Michael Goins. Peppers, what do you emphasize in uh, film work from the last 30 minutes of the game with watching it with your team? Well, I think one, obviously turnovers. Uh, two, our communication on defense when we gave, we're giving up too many easy ones, dead layups, you know, where we mess up, you know, just things like that. And then uh, um, the rotations on the, uh, on the scrambles. Uh, we were really good in the first half. Maybe – I, I we had some guys huffing and puffing. I'll be honest, uh, and but you know I'm sure they did too. Uh, but part of it, our conditioning, we never got to play five. You, when you go three weeks without five on five, it's tough to simulate what you're going to have to do in the game. And I it, I think you can see it. Our numbers first half to second half are much different on both ends of the court. So hopefully, as I said, Wednesday, Thursday we can get a little more of that game speed and practice, game conditioning, and that'll help us make some progress. And if you looked ahead at UNLV in any way? I watched a little bit. I know they play very, very small ball. Uh, Caleb Grill, uh, Iowa State kid, the Wichita kid, actually he's playing four man at times. They got a big guy and then four guards. Um, we saw at the beginning in the locker room, they jumped on Carolina. What was, it was 13 nothing or so, I don't even know, 19 six. Obviously, Carolina went on the run and, and got them handily. But, uh, you know, it, it, for us right now, every game is tough. And uh, you know, we just we just got to keep learning, getting better, figuring out roles. I think we, and it's, you know, and we need practice, but we need games. And, and that's how you figure things out. Thank you, Bruce. Thank you. Anything else for Coach Weber before we let him go? Oh, Brian Black. Hey, uh, Bruce, just how, how, I mean, how big is it for you guys that you'll be able to watch uh, UNLV just the next two days and have all this time to kind of prepare going into Saturday? Well, I hope it helps us. Our coaches do a great job scouting. We've been – thought we were really prepared for Colorado even tonight. I thought we did some good things. They got us on a few things, but uh, out of timeouts a lot of times. Uh, Billy does a good job with that. you got to give him credit. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I hope it helps. And – you know, like I said, practice time, film work, all those things are, are valuable for us right now because now we've we got three games down. Obviously, we wish we were two and one or three and oh, we're not. And, but we can't worry about what's behind us. We got to worry about what's ahead of us. And that means getting better in practice and, and preparing for Vegas. And hopefully, we'll have the advantage. They've been on the road the whole time. It's got to take a toll on you, uh, you know, this whole week and then come in our place. So hopefully it'll be a good advantage for us, and, but we'll see Saturday night.